Secrets. Today we're going to be talking about questions to ask your mortgage lender. That's right. Now, first of all, if you're new to the channel, I'm a mortgage lender licensed in 48 states. If you watch a lot of my videos, you just said that with me. So thank you for coming back. Okay. People are afraid to ask mortgage lenders questions, and that's where I see most of the problems come from. And when I say problems, I mean it's someone who's calling me, everything's gone wrong. They're like, the lender did this, the realtor did this, and I'm like, oh, like I feel their pain, and a lot of it could have been averted. So if you're watching this before you're in contract, congratulations. If you're watching this before you picked out a lender, even better. You can just call me. Um, but the key is this, you need to be comfortable asking the mortgage lender questions. Red flag number one, if you're working with a real estate agent and they're the person that's getting the documents to your lender and they're talking to the lender and you don't have a direct relationship with the lender, that's a red flag. Get out of that situation right now. You should always be communicating with your lender directly. Now, if the real estate agent says, well, I'm just trying to be helpful, maybe, but that's not actually helpful. Okay. What's helpful is you guys being educated and informed throughout the process. And in order to do that, you need a direct line of communication with your lender. Now, if you haven't already started working with a lender, regardless of who recommended them to you, your mother, the real estate agent, your dad, look up the, look up the actual loan officer. Okay. What happens a lot is people will look at a company and they'll be like, Oh, this company, I see their commercials all the time. They must be great. It comes down to the individual loan officer that you're working with. I work at a company where there's 2000 loan officers. Some are amazing. Some aren't. It's just the nature of the industry, just like any industry, right? You could go to a law firm. Some could be amazing. Some maybe not so much. Any industry, it's the same way. So if you haven't picked out a lender yet and you're looking at specific lenders, maybe they were recommended to you, look at reviews, Zillow, Google, Yelp, and read them. Mm -hmm. Make sure that people are talking about them or their team. If you're reading the reviews and you're like, oh, I was referred to lender Paul Smith, but all the reviews are talking about Becky. Well, what the hell is Paul doing, right? And that's a new thing we're seeing where people are buying pages. I'm not kidding. Someone approached me to buy my Instagram because I took 30 days off because they just wanted the level of followers. Um, it's appalling. So it's a thing. So make sure you read the reviews. Now, if they have no reviews, would I personally work with them? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Look guys, I'm hesitant to go into a restaurant that I haven't been to before without checking a review. This is your biggest financial decision. If there's no reviews, it's going to be one of two reasons. Number one, they don't really have any business. They don't do any business. And as a buyer, that's a problem. You know, if you were looking at a heart surgeon, do you want to go to a heart surgeon with no reviews that closes that works on two hearts a year? Or do you want to go to a heart surgeon that has multiple reviews with people saying they're wonderful and they work on a heart every single day? Treat your money the way you would treat your health. Now, in fairness, I think that people often approach lenders very similar to doctors and they don't ask questions, you know, cause that's the thing with the doctor too. Like, would you be brave enough to say, Hey, how many hearts have you worked on? I would, but that's because I know that you really don't want to be on the other end. Same thing with lenders, make sure you're comfortable. So you looked at reviews, they have some fantastic. Now, before you fill out the application, I would send them a list of questions. Some of these questions, it's not even because you need the answer. It's just to see if they answer you at all. It's a really good way to weed out people who are going to blow you off when they think you're too much work. And during the loan process, there's a lot that can happen. And a good lender's job is to be able to respond to you or have someone on their team respond to you. If they're going to blow you off before you're even in contract, because you ask some questions, you don't want to work with them. You want to just, you know, get through it quick. Now, one thing I would advise against is please don't send them a list of chat GPT questions. I've had that and I'll send it to someone on my team and be like, Hey, you know, can you answer these? Because they just don't even make sense. They're like, what is the APR last week? And you're like, that's not even a thing, but okay. So here's the questions I would recommend 
asking upfront. The first question you're gonna ask is because it can be verified. How long have you been in the business and what states are you licensed in? Great, okay, you can go on NMLS Consumer Access and you can see all of this information. The reason I bring this up is I've seen and heard the horror stories where someone's like, they told me they were an expert. And I look it up and I'm like, yeah, they got their license six months ago. And then I look at their production, I'm like, they've closed one loan, right? People can say whatever they want, but the beautiful thing about NMLS is that most loan originators are gonna be on there. If it's a bank, it's a little bit different sometimes, um, but 90% are gonna be on there. So you can look that up, which is great. So number one, you're just seeing the information, how they respond, and you're gonna verify it. If they lie on question one, you are finding a new lender, right? So much of this is just to test out the relationship before you've got money or an interest rate on the line. And you need to be aware. Now, if someone said approximately 15 years and they've been in 14 or 16, okay. But if someone says, I've been in the business for 10 years and you're like, whoa, like I'm looking at your NMLS and you weren't a licensed loan originator, you worked at Costco two years ago, okay, they're lying, right? If they're gonna lie to you about that, what else are they gonna lie to you about? That's the only reason you're doing that question. The next question is, um, at what point can I lock in my rate? Very important. Now, a lot of lenders are just gonna ignore that. And you don't want that. Like I will always say, hey look, right now I'm filming this, it's 2024. Here's my answer to you. Um, I am happy to lock your rate when we're in contract. We do have a program called Lock and Shop, but it's been pretty expensive this year. So generally when we're in contract is when we look at locking. However, I'm always happy to go over where I am with the market and walk you through where I've been with rates over the last few weeks. Simple, right? If someone doesn't wanna talk about rate, there's a reason. And generally it's because they have high rates. I was talking to a gentleman the other day and he was telling me how, you know, he's already been pre-approved with this lender. And he's like, hey, like, you know, where are rates at? Cause I need to do some calculations. Okay, easy. I would be like, hey, this is where I am today. This is what I've seen. I would do your calculations here. The lender said, we don't talk about rates till you're in contract. Whoa. But he's just trying to do some calculations. He's not holding their feet to the fire. He's just trying to do his homework. So if someone reacts really aggressively with not giving you any information about rates, it's a red flag, okay? And if someone's response is, we usually lock you a couple days before close, that's a red flag as well. Ideally, you want a lender who's gonna talk to you about what's going on on the market, who's gonna talk to you the first day you're in contract. We always do that. We go, hey, this is where we are with rates. Do you wanna lock? Do you not? We talk about what we've seen, you know, and it's up to them. And if they go, I don't want to lock, let's talk tomorrow. Great. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. This is too volatile of a market to just trust. And if you guys are like, well, the lender said, guys, no one knows what's happening with this market right now. Everyone thought rates would be going down. They're not. Okay. Could they? Sure. Is there a guarantee? No. Do you need to understand as a client where you are right now? Yeah, how else are you supposed to budget, okay? So definitely a question you wanna ask. Um, how long does it take to close the loan? Very important. You know, in most markets, you have to be able to close in 30 days or less. There's some markets where you need to be able to close in 15 days or less. So if a lender responded and said 45 to 60 days, Unless it's a renovation loan, I would be a little skeptical, okay? Another question to ask is, at what point will you go over what to expect with closing cost and payment with me? Do we set up a time or question mark? And if they say, we will go over that when you're in contract, that is a red flag. Red flag again. Look, I always wanna go through what to expect with rates, what to expect with fees, what to expect with closing costs and payments before you even start shopping. So if once again, they're waiting till you're in contract and you're like, well, Jen, what's the big deal? Here's the thing, guys. Once you're in contract, you're emotionally vested in that house. So if someone's gonna give you bad news, meaning, oh, the payment's a lot more than you thought, you're gonna be more likely to accept it if you have a house that you're in contract on. 
if you know they they're like oh here's all the scary stuff you may not buy at that price point right i would rather tell you the scary stuff and drop your price point to where you're comfortable than have you emotionally invested and end up house poor so definitely a question you want to ask um if they say oh we'll just send it over guys you want them to go through it line by line you really really do um, another question to ask is, will you be doing a pre-qualification, pre-approval, or fully underwritten pre-approval? And say, I would really like a fully underwritten pre-approval. That is the gold standard. That is the best that you can get when it comes to a pre-approval for a mortgage, is a fully underwritten pre-approval. Lenders legally cannot charge you for this. So, of course you want it, right? Um, if they say, oh, we just do a prequal, a prequal is generally going to be that maybe they ran your credit. Maybe they didn't. We had two last month where the lenders hadn't even run credit. They just gave the real estate agents letters because they were buddy with the real estate agent. The client then, then ends up with us because they're like, yeah, this didn't feel right. Like, I don't even think they ran my credit. And we're like, wow, like, seriously, that's crazy. And you may be like, well, that's so nice. They didn't run their guys. They didn't do their job. They didn't prequalify, right? You know, those people are in contract on a house that they may or may not qualify for. And they're putting money down on a house that they may or may not qualify for. That's a lot of risk, okay? Generally, a prequel, though, is going to be at least a soft credit pull. And that's it. It's a soft credit pull. And then they're looking at what you put in and they're likely running it through desktop underwriting. Sometimes they don't even run it through desktop underwriting. Personally, do I do prequels? No. Mm -mm. No, I used to. I don't. Absolutely not. Look, you're either going to do a pre-approval with me or you're going to do a fully underwritten pre-approval, but I am not doing a prequel. And I'm going to tell you why. They're garbage. You know, I have seen enough to know that I wouldn't trust this for myself. And if I don't trust it for myself, I am not going to recommend it to you. I'm also not going to put my name on something that could be problematic. Absolutely not. I'm not going to have you risk money on something that I don't know will close. Mm -mm. So if you want a lender who's just going to give you an instant pre-approval or just a letter without anything, please don't call me because I will really disappoint you. Um, so pre-approval is when the lender runs your credit. It could be a soft pull. Um, I like hard pulls, guys. The soft pulls, they're getting better, but I like a hard pull. So a soft pull of credit is it's like a baby version. It doesn't actually hit your score. It gives the lender an idea of where you are, but you can't close a loan with it. And if you're doing a government loan, VA or FHA, soft pull credit often will make it look like a decline when it should be approved. So I'm always going to be doing hard pull credit for those loans because I want to make sure we're good. Conventional, same thing. If you're serious about buying a house, you should do the hard pull of credit. Now, full disclosure, Guaranteed rate has started charging upfront $25 per person on all loans except for VA, $25 per person for the hard pull of credit. And that's because it costs us way more than that, but we're passing on a portion of the cost. We do not make money from that. That goes straight to the companies that deal with the credit bureaus, period. So yes, you would be paying $25 for your credit report if my team pulls a hard pull, okay? VA, no. So, fully underwritten pre-approval. That's where I'm at. That's where my heart is. And here's why. You get fully processed. You get fully underwritten. It gives you the ability to have the strongest offer. Also, it takes away all the worry. It makes buying the house better because we've already done the toughest part before you had any emotions involved. It also gives me the ability once that's done, we get on the phone, we talk about closing costs, what to expect with rates, what to expect with payments. We play with the numbers up and down. We do all of this before you go shopping with a real estate agent, okay? Not all lenders do this, but look, it's something I would be looking for if I was shopping for a mortgage. I would want to make sure the lender that ultimately would be making money off of me, because let's be real, lenders get paid to do loans. I would want to make sure they were putting in enough work and they were actually 
helping me. There's a lot of lenders, unfortunately, where real estate agents just send them business and they don't really have to work that hard. You see that with new construction as well. You'll always hear about the builder's lender being terrible. And it's because once again, they're just indoor cats being fed. They're not out there having to, you know, actually provide some level of value. Now, the next two questions, you may feel comfortable, you may not. If someone emailed me these, these questions, I would be delighted, delighted, because I'd be like, okay, you get it, you get it. You understand there's something here. I would ask the lender how many loans they closed last year and how many were purchases. Yeah, yep, how many were purchases? Here's why. A purchase is very different from a refinance in terms of potential complications, as well as how quickly you have to move and how many people the lender has to keep happy during the transaction. Refinances, my God, it could take 60 days. They don't, with us they don't, but it doesn't matter. No one's gonna lose anything. With a purchase, you have to meet the deadline. So you wanna make sure you're working with a lender that is predominantly doing purchase loans when you're looking at purchasing a house because they're gonna know how to move within the timelines as well as work with multiple parties. So I would definitely ask that. And then here's another one that's a little controversial. I would ask if the real estate agent recommended you to the lender, I would, I would say, do you participate in any of the real estate agents marketing efforts? Basically, do you pay for their marketing? And the reason I bring that up is that unfortunately, and look, this is not everybody. So I want to say that before I get 19 comments, there's good real estate agents and bad, same with lenders, same with plumbers, same with veterinarians, right? And some lenders buy their business. What that means is that they will approach a real estate agent and say, hey, I'm gonna pay for half your Zillow, I'm gonna pay for all these parties for your clients, but you have to send them all to me. And the real estate agent goes, okay, great. Well, wait a second, how's their rates? How are their fees? How do they treat the clients? How do they educate the clients? Most of the time they don't ask because they're getting something paid for and you are what's being bartered. So. Feel free to ask that question, you know, and here's the thing, if your real estate agent calls you and says, those questions were so inappropriate, you should dump them as well because these are not inappropriate questions. This is you wanting to know like, hey, when's my rate get locked? When do we talk about rates? When are we gonna talk about my closing costs? Is this a prequal or a fully underwritten pre-approval? How long have you been a lender? How many loans do you do, you know? Are you paying for the real estate agent's marketing? Is that why they referred me? Look, if someone refers you someone, it's fair to know why, but no one likes to disclose anything right now. So the lenders that I know, I, that I get along with really well, they would be delighted by this question. They would love it because they'd be like, finally, because one of the frustrations in the industry is we're like, this is so harmful to consumers. And I've got other videos on it. And look, it goes the other way. You could be talking to one of the big call centers where they're gonna recommend you to a real estate agent and ask them, say, hey, if you recommend me to a real estate agent, is your company or a subsidiary of your company getting um, a portion of their commission back? Because all the big boys are doing it right now. I shouldn't say all. A lot of the big boys are doing it where they're like, oh, we're going to refer you to our preferred agent and you will give you $200. But they're taking 35% of that real estate agent's commission through another one of their companies. No joke. And look, here's the thing. The only people that are going to be offended by your questions are lenders who are lazy and don't want to put in the work. Uh, people who are getting their, you're being referred to them because they're buying the agent, people who don't do any loans and we're just gonna lie to you about their level ex of experience, and the side hustlers, that's a new thing. Recently, I was in a Reddit thread called Originators. I love it there, I spend too much time, they're probably gonna ban me. Anyways, and this guy was like, hey, I've got a really big social media following and I got my mortgage license, but this is a lot of work and like, I don't even know how to do this. Like, what should I do? I, should I get my real estate license? What do you guys think? And I'm like, and, and he's like, this isn't my full-time job. This is just like a, a second job. So it can't take up that much time, but I need something where I can like leverage my social media followers and, and not have to work another two days a week. 
I was like, <laughs> if you guys watch this channel, you know I hate that. There's so many people on social media that are like, they just sell people off or they just pretend they're something they're not. They're just monsters. And I was like, dude, you know what? If you have a social media following and you actually respect them, send them to people who know how to do the job and stop trying to make every penny you can. Like this is not a side gig job. This is a real full-time job. That's the thing. A lender, a good lender is going to be full-time. You have to be, you have to be, this is not a part-time job. So look, I would definitely ask those questions, you know, if you've already been pre-approved, ask a bunch of those questions still, you know, it doesn't hurt. And here's the thing. What's the worst thing that happens? The lender gets mad at you. Okay. Well, guess what? When you're in contract on a house and you ask a question that they don't like, they're going to get mad at you. That's a bad relationship, you know, or the real estate agent's going to call you and be like, what? great. Bye. Why are you so upset? You know, if, Someone asked me all those questions and I'm not just saying this because obviously I wrote them. I would be like, great, let's go. You know, the chat GPT ones, they crack me up, but we still answer them or we get on the phone with the person asking them to make sure that we're answering them. A good lender is always delighted to answer your questions. There's no dumb questions. So look, use this as a way to get through people who don't want to help. And maybe you'll look out, maybe the lender that the real estate agent recommended you to will be like, this is amazing. Here's all my answers. Let's set up a call. Let's do this. And I'm telling you right now, you will have such a better transaction because of that. And look, Sometimes lenders don't give people a lot of information because a lot of people don't want it. But if you're asking questions up front, you're signaling to the lender, hey, I want to know what I'm getting into. And I can tell you as someone who's bought a bunch of houses as well as helps people every day, you always want to know what you're getting into. So as always, thank you for watching. Um, if you guys have questions, hop on the calendar, um, email me, have some fun, shoot me a text. I'm licensed in 48 states. I'm happy to help. And look, if you're already with a lender, I really hope that they answer all these questions for you and it just makes you more confident. Thank